Good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Sunday service. Hey, Matt, it's good to have you here. Hi, Darren. Hey, we're just doing a really quick intro before we get on with our service to say hi, welcome. We're really excited. It's Palm Sunday. We've got a lot happening in the service today for you. We've got new members coming up. We've got another lockdown retreat with Mike and Fiona. Um, but right now, we're just going to have a slideshow introduction of the, the different ways that you can get involved with Forest Community Church. So be sure to have a look and connect with us when you can. Please make sure to comment in the chat box too, because we love to hear from you when we're alive. Thanks, guys. Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to FCC and our Sunday morning service. Did you all remember that the clocks went forward last night? 
be interesting to see how many people turn up on time. I, I suppose it actually doesn't matter really when you're online. You can you can turn up whenever, can't you? So uh, whatever time you are, what time, whatever time you're joining us, you're really welcome. Uh, it's uh, Palm Sunday today, and uh, we're going to be uh, looking at, uh, at what uh, that was all about. And obviously, we're in our lead up to Easter now, so that's uh, that's what uh, we're going to be doing today. Um, really good to see the slideshow there of uh, how you're watching us. Um, such a such a relaxing way. Lovely to see Jeff there in his um, you know in, in his armchair, his feet up. That's that's really good. I don't know how we're going to cope when we all go back to the the church building. We're going to have to get used to normal chairs again. But great to see. So thanks for for, for all of that. What what are we doing next week, Darren? Oh, that's a really really good question, Matt. Um, so next week. And guys, this is really, really important because next week is going to be our final slideshow. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so it's been really, really fabulous having all of these slideshows as we've been through lockdown, as we've been through these, you know, 12 months without actually being in a church service in the building. And it's a wonderful way of connecting with you guys and seeing your faces and just having some fun along the way. So it doesn't mean, please don't be broken hearted. It doesn't mean we won't do them again. It's just we're going to have a little bit of a break because, you know, variety is the spice of life and all that. Um, so for next week, it's very thematic. You can probably guess what we're going to ask you to send in. We're going to ask you to send in the things that you're doing for Easter. So any Easter egg hunts that you've got, so you might have to do them a little bit early. Any Easter outfits or Easter hats. I know Jeff has a massive collection of hats. I want to see those or any bonnets making that we've got going on. Easter crafts, Easter cakes, anything to do with Easter. And just be creative with it, your reflections, all that kind of thing. But everyone get involved as we celebrate Easter because it's a wonderful time for the church, as you all know. And yeah, it'd just be great to celebrate this as our last slideshow as well. So send them into Lizzie by Wednesday at midday that would be really great and our email is going to pop across the screen now for you so thank you very much guys brilliant look forward to seeing those so i'm just gonna uh, open the service in prayer now so let's uh, pray uh heavenly father we um uh, we just uh, thank you for for the, the slideshow we thank you that we are able to come together in our own homes during this time and um and lord you know as we go into springtime we do look forward to that time where we can be together again and um so i pray that you are with us all now as we join together in our homes as we look at your word as we reflect on the events of palm sunday um and Lord, I just pray for each person watching now that you, you uh, speak into our lives, that um, you are with us, and uh, that you, you bless this service this morning, Lord. Amen. Amen. Oh, thank you, Matt. And now we're going to continue our service now with sun worship with Rosie and the team. Thank you, guys. Please do join with us in worship as we sing um, the creed.
Well, thank you, Rosie and the team for leading us in sung worship there. Um, and again, it's just wonderful to have you all here on Palm Sunday. And as we lead up to next week, we just want to share with you a couple of things that are happening this week. Um, so next week is Easter Sunday, as you know, and we are going to be live streaming from the church building, which is just really, really exciting. And we're so looking forward to doing that. And there'll be a different atmosphere. But just please note there's no congregation still at the moment. And as we slowly open up with the road, map then we'll let you know when the congregation can come back in and we can meet in person so but it will be fun to watch next week when it's live and it will be different so please do tune in at 10 30 as normal and you know share that share that with your friends and family because easter is a really wonderful celebration and we look forward to that with you and in preparation for that Easter Sunday, we've got a wonderful social media series that we're going to be posting every day of this week of the journey of Jesus and the events that happened and as they unfolded. So follow us on Facebook and Instagram to see those social media posts and devotionals and, and just be really, really engaged this week as we journey to Sunday. Great. Thanks, Darren. And one of the um, highlights of our Easter service is going to be a musical collaboration. Uh, we're putting together the song What a Morning and um, Rosie and the team are doing that. And we'd really love you to, to send in uh, a clip of you singing the song and we'll put that together uh, just like we did back at, at Christmas. Uh, so it's an amazing uh, Easter hymn. So we're really excited to do that. But there's not much time left uh, to get your uh, videos in if you haven't done it already. I think it's this evening, uh, today uh, is, is the deadline. So maybe after you've had your Sunday lunch uh, and you haven't done it yet, uh, get your singing voices together and get them in. Because the more people we can, uh, we can uh, get contributions from, the better. So uh, really, um, uh, really encourage you to, to, to take part in that. Details have been sent by email and they're also in our uh, Facebook members page. Um, but um, oh, you can you can contact us on, on email if you, if you need details. So uh, really looking forward to that. Uh, coming up now, um, we've got uh, another a lockdown clip from Mike and Fiona. Uh, if you don't know Mike and Fiona, they're members of our church who are on a well-earned three month sabbatical um, but obviously uh, with lockdown that hasn't really gone uh, quite to, to plan uh, so they, they wanted to make sure um, that they, they shared with us uh, what they've been doing so and uh, uh, so they sent us in this little clip of what they've been up to during lockdown so over to you Mike and Fiona. Last year, you learned patience with Mike. This year, another opportunity for personal growth. Living in lockdown with Mike and Fiona, making lockdown fun. Hi there. <laughs> no, you go. No, you go. First. Welcome back. Hello. So each week, we've been bringing you some tips from lockdown to sort of help help you feel as if you're having those experiences you're really missing but just seeing if you can simulate them at home so Mike what are you missing what's really something that's well do you know I feel like I've been wearing these same clothes forever I, I miss clothes shopping amazingly yeah and the thing about clothes shopping is you can try stuff on and then you can really say well actually that doesn't fit and then you know but buying it online is one thing but the experience of actually having a, piece, a garment that fits you properly and the thing is I don't like to boast but with my body shape it's not easy to find clothes online that fit properly you know, yeah that kind of muscle it is just <laughs> yeah so what, what we're gonna do what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna try i'm gonna measure my cup and we're gonna have a go at making some from home and then we'll just have clothes that really fit us properly so here we go now making clothes obviously you need material and we have these lovely old curtains yeah. uh, as you can see proper mm -hmm. well antiques really yeah. they work quite well actually yeah, yeah. so and as you can see they're very much my color mm -hmm. So uh, let's just see what we can do with right, that. I need to measure you first. So I'm just going to do some measuring. Mm. Uh -huh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Got it. So how many? Yeah. I got it. Great. Yep. I can relax. Yep. All right. Okay. New clothes, please. Yeah. Okay. Right. You know what you're doing. Yeah. 
Have you done this before? No. Okay. Come out, please. Yeah. Oh, that's going to fit really well. Okay. Thanks. Okay. It really looks like she knows what she's doing. Smooth work. So pretty much all done. I've just got to do this last measurement. This needs to be cut off at about here. But I've found, as I've done this, that it's actually much quicker instead of cutting, you can actually just rip it really easily like that. That um, just saves a bit of time, makes it easier. So Mike, my nice new top for you. Would you like to try it on? Fantastic, thank you. It's the colour you wanted. It doesn't matter, it can go either way round. Okay. It, uh, yeah, that looks good. It's... Wow! It's nice. The thing about this is, uh, it's usually hard to get things that are properly contoured to my shape. You've, um, you've done... Works really well. I think this fits you nicely. A truly extraordinary job. Well, Fiona, what have we learned today? Yeah. We just had fun. We feel like we've got new clothes. We feel like we've been shopping, really, and it's just so nice how... <laughs> Oh, well, it fits you. Thank you, Fiona. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's nice and soft. It feels good. And Quite again, we miss material. you all. Yeah, and if yeah. you can't go shopping for material, just, just look at your curtain and see what you got. It's just all there. Making lockdown fun. Well, uh, Mike and Fiona, uh, I think Matt and I are a bit lost for words. Like, how do you follow that, Matt? <laughs> uh, yeah, lost, lost for words. Uh, another amazing lockdown tip there. <laughs> <laughs> it's just full of wisdom, guys. Yeah, learning more wisdom from you each time. We've learnt patience from you, Mike. Now we've learnt about how to be really successful in lockdown. And it's, yeah, just as good as the real thing there. And Fiona, marveling, I've marveled at the way you held it together there. Well done. Thank you so much, guys. It's been a wonderful series of having you and seeing you while you've been on this sabbatical break. And we look forward to welcoming you, you back next month as you come back uh, to church with all of us. So thank you so much. So right now we're going to move on to Sue, who is our leader for uh, children's ministry. And she is going to share a story with us. It's called The Great Parade. So thank you, Sue. Today is known as Palm Sunday. Let's read the story that reminds us about why it's called that. The Great Parade. Let's go to Jerusalem, said Jesus to his friends. I have something important to do there. So they went, and when they could just see the city from a nearby hillside, Jesus said, let's have a parade. Jesus's friends were surprised. A parade, they wondered, why a parade? But no one said anything because Jesus was already given instructions. I want two of you to borrow a donkey, they, he said. Tell the owners I need it. He'll understand. When the two friends returned with the donkey, Jesus hopped on its back, gently nudged its sides and started down the hill. His friends followed close behind. Hooray for Jesus, they shouted. Jesus is king. Down, down, down they rode towards the city gate and the closer they got the more people joined in it's jesus the teacher someone called it's jesus the healer called someone else three cheers for jesus called one and all soon there were people everywhere marching along with the parade and shouting from the roadside some took off their coats and laid them in front of the donkey Others cut palm branches from the trees and waved them about. There were hundreds, maybe thousands, clapping and dancing and shouting their way through the city gates. Everyone was happy. Well, almost everyone. Some of the religious leaders didn't like Jesus. They were jealous 
because the ordinary people were so fond of him, and when they saw the parade, they frowned. Wait a minute, they called. You can't have a parade here. Tell your friends to be quiet, Jesus. But Jesus just laughed. Tell them to be quiet? Impossible. Then he turned to look at the crowd. Can't you see, he said, there is so much happiness here that even if I could make the people quiet, the stones in the street would jump up and shout for joy. Thank you, Sue, for that wonderful children's story there. It's a real blessing to us. Um, now, this is a really, really exciting part of our service that we want to share with you guys. Um, as people come and join Forest Community Church and they get to know the church and they get involved in the different things that we do here and they form friendships. They also um, have the opportunity to go on stage one, which is our gear one course, which is Discovering God and Forest Community Church, where they get to learn more about us, what, you know, what we stand for, what our mission is, our vision that God has given us. And when they complete that, they choose uh, whether they want to come into membership with the church and that's really exciting for us we've had this a couple of times last year and again now we've got a group of people who want to join in membership with Forest Community Church they have already joined because they completed the course a few months ago which is exciting um, but now we're just officially um, publicly I would say more so welcoming them into membership of the church where we just hear a little bit more from each of them and then we get to pray for them as they come into our church family. So we've got a few of those people now for you. Thanks guys. Good, so uh, so John, just tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, where you come Hi, from. Hi Tim. Hi Tim, so I'm John Wetley. Uh, I live in Steamills. Uh, I'm married to Emmy. And we've been married 25 years this summer. Uh, we've got two sons, uh, Jay, who's 19, and Leo, who's 15. And I started watching the, the service online in September. Uh, and, and then I reached out to you beginning of October, and we started talking. Um, I then uh, became a Christian on the 16th of October, which was the day before your birthday, Tim. Yeah, in December, I did the Gear One course, uh, which was four weeks, and become a member of the church at the end of December. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to so so all so I haven't been in church yet. I'm really looking forward to to coming into church and meeting everyone. Mm. And we're looking forward to baptizing you as soon as we can as well. Really looking forward to that, Tim. Yeah, uh, really looking forward to that. Fantastic. Good. Well, we're, well, let's. Um, I think there'll be a big party when we have that day. Um, hopefully, not too long in the future. <laughs> Well, good morning, and um, I'm just going to ask you to introduce yourselves because uh, everyone wants to know a little bit about you. So, who are you, and where are you from? Um, I'm Phil, and I'm Sally, and we're we're in Ross on Moy. Okay, so you're in Ross at the moment, but a little bit tells me that you haven't always lived in Ross; that you've lived further afield than that. So, could you just tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, sure. Oh. Um. We spent three years living in the Philippines, um, uh, in Manila, um, working uh, with OMF. Um, Phil was teaching uh, at an um, international school there and I was doing lots of different things. Oh wow, okay, brilliant. Um, and what drew you to Forest Community Church? How did you get to find out about us and um, how come you started joining us for services? Um, we had some friends who joined uh, a couple of years ago and um, I'm sort of teaching at the school at uh, Forest High School and I wanted to sort of get a bit more involved in the community there sort of link into the school and I know Forest uh, Community Church actually uh, was in the school for a while wasn't it and um, so um, yeah we went along to as a sort of look-see and uh, yeah we really liked it we liked the openness and the, um, the genuineness and uh, and the teaching and the worship and uh, yeah so uh, we've been coming a lot more in lockdown haven't we since uh, oh, that's great and yeah. you've got family i think yep yep 
<laughs> so how many children have you got? We've got four children. Okay. Um, I'm eldest. Daisy is at university. She's another link from from the church actually, because when she went to Soul Survivor, she met a couple of girls, um, Emily and Nina, who um, yes. um, go to the church, and so she's been sort of linked with that for a while. So that was probably our first contact actually. Wasn't yeah, it, with yeah, with the, the branch she used to do. The yes, branch. The yeah, branch. I know. Yeah, and then we've got George who's eighteen, uh, Rose who's fifteen, and Holly who's twelve, and they're all at John Curl School in um, Ross. Yeah. Excellent. Oh, well, it's it's nice that you've been able to just introduce yourselves and that people have been able to see faces and put names to them. So, uh, so welcome to Forest Community Church and uh, it's great to have you with us. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. <laughs> well, everyone, um, I'm here to introduce another couple into membership at Forest Community Church. And hey, Richard and Lee, welcome. We're so pleased to have you come into membership. Hello. Hi. <laughs> So I've just got a couple of quick questions for you because some you will be familiar to quite a few people because you've been at FCC for a little while now. When did you first join? About two years ago, we think. It doesn't seem like that though because of all the lockdowns, but we have been here quite a while. <laughs> oh, that's really great. And we're really pleased to have you. And you've got a little daughter as well? Yeah. 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 She's called Natalie and she's a pain, but... <laughs> we love her anyway yeah. oh she's gorgeous and we enjoy having her to kids club as well so it's really great that she's getting involved too so um what drew you guys to forest community church um well we moved down to the forest area obviously and so we were looking around for a church we we visited a few and uh popped into the forest community church actually just as it was finishing and we like we could see it was quite modern and it it got like abandoned stuff and um yeah we got like a, a little leaflet and then we visited a couple of weeks later and yeah it, it just seemed really friendly mm. and everyone was lovely and it just looked really modern and lively and that's just what we were looking for no that's perfect and you said you just moved down then as well Richard or you know because you're not from here both of you are you you're not from the Forest of Dean where are you guys from we're from um, a place called Litchfield, which is not far from Birmingham. It's Staffordshire area, so hence the brummy accent. <laughs> <laughs> we just had that conversation. I couldn't hear it that much, but apparently you are from Birmingham area. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. so that's really great. And then as you know, as you're coming into membership now, what do you feel that, you know, God's um, leading you to be more involved in the church? How's, it, how's he leading you there? What do you think you'd like to get involved with? I'd probably like to get involved in the worship team. I'm uh, uh, quite musical. Uh, I've done stuff in worship teams before um, and enjoyed it. So uh, other than that, though, I don't really know. <laughs> um, as for me, I'm, I'm a teacher at the moment, so my life's like 100 miles an hour. But I, I do hope to get involved soon. And for now, I'd just like to make some friends in church. I think that'd be really nice and just get to know people and um, wait to see what God's got for me later on. I'll just stay tuned, I guess. <laughs> oh, that's wonderful. Well, thank you guys. And welcome to Forest Community Church officially as members. And we are so blessed to have you. Yay! <laughs> thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Well, thank you. That's been really, really wonderful to meet some of our new members. Some of them you'll recognise, you already know them and they've just come into membership a little bit later. And some of them will be absolutely brand new to us. So it's wonderful just to hear a little bit from them. And um, yes, so thank you guys. Welcome to Forest Community Church as official members. And that's it for that. Well. Hang on, uh, Adara, and th there is one other or two other new members that uh, we may have forgotten. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well caught there, Matt, definitely. Yes, we. it's not quite over yet, guys. Um, we have with us, uh, obviously, Matt, who's hosting with me this morning, and Christine, his wife. So, yes, you guys are coming into membership. Welcome. And I'm just going to ask you the same question. So when did you first come to Forest Community Church and what drew you here? OK, well, we um, we started coming online, so we haven't actually been in the building and we came in August last year. And we were drawn in by a few things, weren't we? 
Yeah, I think God had been stirring something in us that we, we needed to, to, to move on from our previous church, which had been in, in Bream. And obviously, lockdown gave us the opportunity to explore online uh, other churches. And um, uh, we, we stumbled across it. Well, I think I, I was the first one who stumbled across it. And we just um, just were, you know, inspired by... The range of, of people of all ages, uh, people looked happy, um, and um, I think you know the word I've always used is it was an authentic church. It was you know people talk um, uh, in real terms, and, and that really came through even online. And um, and also you know the, the preaching was fantastic, really practical based preaching, and um, yeah, it was just a lot that drew us in and. We watched for about three, four, five weeks, uh, just in the background. Uh, no one knew we were there. And it was really strange because we kind of felt like we knew you all, but you didn't even know we were there. And um, so eventually reached out to Tim and, uh, and, and here we are. Oh, that's wonderful. Really excited that's, to be. Oh, that's good to hear. And it's so, it's amazing about this, uh, you know, being online uh, that you can watch from home and you can watch in secret. Uh, and I love how you felt like you knew us all. And now we have the pleasure of getting to know you guys. So that's awesome. Uh, we're so pleased to have you here. So just one other quick question is, you know, how do you see yourself getting more involved in church life, especially as we open up more? Okay, well, we've, um, we've already enjoyed being part of a small group. Um, we've got great leaders, really great ones. <laughs> there it is. Um, and, um, and, but, um, yeah, we're just, um, I've been doing the training for neighbourhood chaplains. And also I'm involved with Christians Against Poverty. So I'm hoping that um, we can bring a little bit of that to church as well. Oh, that's awesome. Um, well, I'm, I'm, and I'm, well, I'm hosting the service, so <laughs> with a Darren, so <laughs> maybe that. But um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I, I think we'll sort of see where God 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 leads us. But um, I'm quite passionate about um, leadership, teaching, mentoring. So maybe something to do with that. But I think uh, um, as we come back into the church building, that that will unveil itself. I'm sure God has a plan. Oh, that's so good to hear. Both of you guys, you're just bringing so much to our church and we're just want, just so pleased to have you uh, and, and your family as well, because you've got three daughters too, um, and a dog. <laughs> and we really, really welcome you both. And thank you. We're just excited to see what God has in store for you at Forest Community Church. And thank you for the things you've already done um, as well. So just a uh, church, please join with me now as we pray for all the new members that we've mentioned this morning. We welcome them with open arms uh, into our community, into full membership. And uh, we just are going to bless them now through prayer. Heavenly Father, we just, oh, we thank you that you are a God who loves family. You built us for family, for community, for fellowship, for relationship. And we thank you here at Forest Community Church. You have blessed us with this beautiful family, this body of Christ that is open and warm and loving and just wants to share your love and your joy with the community around them. And I thank you for these new members, these new people who have seen it uh, in their hearts, have found the pathway that you have laid before them to come to Forest Community Church, to be involved in community, to be drawn into family and to become members and to just join with us as one body to do your work, to be your hands and feet in the community. I ask you to just bless each one of them right now where they are. Lord, we pray that they feel welcomed, that they feel like they have found home we pray that they will find those authentic relationships that Matt talked about, that they will find deep and meaningful friendship, that they will find spiritual growth and maturity, that they will just ultimately deepen in their walk with you, that your light will be so bright in their lives that they will grow and be fulfilled and find true purpose as they come into this church and as they deepen their walk with you, Lord Jesus. 
We thank you for each one of them. And we bless them, Lord Jesus, through the power in your holy name, we pray. Amen. 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 So, okay, well, thank you. I have a job to do. <laughs> he does. <laughs> Get on with it, Matt. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, coming up now, um, uh, Nikki and the prayer team are going to lead us in prayer, and then uh, Tim will be along to, to deliver our message for today. Um, and after the message, uh, Rosie and the worship team will be back for a, uh, a worship song. So, over to you guys, thank you. Good morning, church. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we're here today. We thank you that we're here to learn from you and your word. And we just pray, Lord, that um, as the service opens up and your word is revealed to us, uh, that you yourself would reveal um, a new way of comprehending, of uh, living out, of grasping, of knowing, of, um, yeah, just loving your word and all that it has for our lives, all that it um, speaks into, um, the hope that, that is in um, your word that's written for us, Lord, our instruction book, our manual for life. And Lord, we just um, thank you for this new season this new season um, in our lives, this new season um, in, in the world that we live in with regards to saying goodbye to this time last year when we were challenged by um, the virus and saying hello to and welcoming in uh, the hope that we have for um, this vaccination and, and the virus um, not having such a hold on us, Lord. We thank you for this new season that this brings the hope that spring brings and, and we look around and we see a beauty uh, and, and none of that disappears none of that changes um despite what's going on around us so help us to just focus on um the hope uh, that that this season brings lord and we can see it in creation so obviously and it brings joy to our hearts and um, it opens our eyes to your beauty and that those are the things that we need to focus on in Isaiah 61, 11, your word says, for as the soil makes the sprout come up and a garden causes seeds to grow, so the sovereign Lord will make righteousness and praise spring up before all nations. What a picture that is, Lord. So would you please just help us to um, hold on to that truth um, of who you are and um, what you're able to do, all that you've accomplished already, and all that you've got in store for us as your people and your planet and help us to just be um, reverent and in awe and in wonder of who you are Lord and uh, help us to embrace this new season um, with joy and thankfulness in our hearts. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Let us pray. Father God, as we come together to worship you today, we do so with humility and with a sense of gratitude and thankfulness. Thank you for all that you're doing in our lives as individuals and within the church. Thank you for saving us, for healing us, for the gift of life itself. And thank you for this season of spring where we are just surrounded by the beauty of your created world. Everywhere, as we look around us, we see at this time of year signs of growth, signs of new life, signs of hope and remind us of your goodness and your faithfulness. And so this morning we come to you with grateful, thankful hearts. Psalm 100 says this, Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful to him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Amen. Well, today is Palm Sunday, and so this is the week before what we celebrate Easter, when Jesus rose from the dead. And uh, so Palm Sunday was the Sunday when um, we celebrate Jesus riding into Jerusalem. 
not on a horse like most uh, conquering kings would come in, uh, but actually on a donkey, on a foal, uh, in front of cheering crowds uh, that week before Easter. Um, but of course, when we think about Jesus, uh, we often think about Jesus and massive crowds of people, and often there were whole, whole huge crowds around him. But actually, it's interesting when you look at the, the Bible and the, the accounts of Jesus, he very, very rarely sought the crowds out. You know, he wasn't uh, someone who was attention seeking. In fact, he was kind of like the, the polar opposite of all our celebrities today. You know, they seek out uh, attention, and, um, uh, but yet Jesus didn't. He often went away by himself and then suddenly people found out where he was and piled up there. Um, you know, I'm not convinced if Jesus was, uh, uh, had appeared in our time that he would have started an Instagram page up to, to garner uh, thousands of followers. And he may have done, but I, I kind of think he probably wouldn't have done. And you know, after many of his miracles, for instance, you know, often you, you, he, you would read words like this in the Bible where he'd say things like, don't tell anyone that I've, you know, I've healed you. Just go home quietly. Um, you know, my, or, or someone would ask him uh, to do a miracle and he'd say, well, my, my time has not yet come. And he kind of flew under the radar. Or even sometimes he healed people and then someone would come to that person who'd been healed and say, well, uh, who's done this? And he, they'd say, I don't know. <laughs> and there was some guy that we met, but I don't know what his name is. You know, Jesus wasn't seeking publicity. But then we come uh, into kind of the last uh, week or so of Jesus um, public life on earth and he had three years of public life 30 years of of um, quiet uh, growing up being in the home working as a carpenter and then three years of what we call his public ministry and as he came towards that last week um, we read uh, in Matthew's gospel in chapter 20 just before the passage we read earlier on uh, the one leading into it and it says in verse 17 as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem he took the 12 disciples aside privately and he told them what was going to happen to him listen he said we're going up to Jerusalem where the son of man that's Jesus way of describing himself will be de uh, betrayed uh, to the leading priests and teachers of religious law they will sentence him to die then he will th then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked flogged with a whip and crucified but on the third day he will rise from the dead so jesus after all this time of public ministry but had been fairly kind of quiet he hadn't been seeking the attention he'd done it in places like galilee you know somewhere not dissimilar to um to to the forest of dean you know a place that's not that well known and he, um, he suddenly sought out Jerusalem, you know, like suddenly going, like, let's go to London. And this was making a statement, a place where there was going to be thousands of people and where all the happening things were going on and where he would be noticed and where, um, you know, he would suddenly get a lot of attention. And so Jesus intentionally went to Jerusalem. So what, what changed in the process? Why, why did he go up to Jerusalem? Why did he go to that place to become more prominent? Well, I think it's simply this. Jesus knew that his time on earth was coming to the climax. His time had almost come. And so that, you know, when he got to the outskirts of Jerusalem, he uncharacteristically on his arrival there, he, he actually sent two of his disciples off um, and he, he told them to commandeer a donkey and its colt or like a, a foal. And so his plan was to ride this into Jerusalem, the heart of the Jewish nation, nation and in a public procession to announce to them the Messiah is here, that he's arrived, the Saviour, the one that they were been looking forward to, the one that all their, their, their Old Testament prophecies have been pointing towards, but yet they hadn't realised was there. So it begs the question, so how did it go? Well, if you know, uh, I've read the Bible before, you'll know it went pretty well. You know, Jesus, um, they brought, uh, he went, his disciples went off and they, exactly as Jesus had described, and um, they took this donkey and this colt and uh, were told if, uh, if anyone asks questions about this, just say the Lord has need of them. And it all went according to plan. 
They brought the, the donkey and the colt to Jesus. Jesus rode the colt, so that was the young, the young donkey, one that wouldn't have been ridden before, and uh, it didn't misbehave. I mean, let me tell you, someone who's been involved in animals all their life, you know, if you ride a young animal, <laughs> the first thing they want to do is throw you off. That, that's how they react. They all, you know, we've seen the bro Brock and Bronco, haven't we? Well, that's how they, they respond. But there's no sense of that happened with Jesus. He just rode into Jerusalem. I'm sure it made a difference having probably the other donkey, the mother alongside, perhaps had a calming influence. But of course, Jesus was doing this and it was a sign of a king. It's what David had told his son uh, Solomon all those years earlier when he was announcing Solomon as his successor. He told Solomon to, to get a, um, a mule to get a, and to ride it into Jerusalem to announce the arrival of a new king. And Jesus was doing the same. And of course, we know crowds gathered and they laid their clothing and palm branches on the road ahead of him. And of course, this, the clothing was um, a sign of their um, submission to Jesus. And the branches were there as, um, this was kind of like a Jewish um, nationalism uh, and a symbol of it. And the, the, the palm um, was a very much something which would be imprinted upon their, their coinage. And so it was very much in, in something which the Jews would do to recognise someone of significance and importance. And of course, the crowds even shouted, Hosanna! And of course, Hosanna is um, a recognition of the Messiah, the one who is to be the de their deliverer. Um, and it literally means save now. And that's, that's what the word Hosanna means. And uh, on his arrival into Jerusalem, it's, the Bible says in verse 10, the entire city was in uproar. And so there was this cacophony of noise and excitement and buzz around the place. Um, something incredible was happening. And we see, as we read through Matthew's uh, account of this happening, you see Matthew we uh, weaves into his gospel details how Jesus fulfilled the, the prophecies that the Jews would have known in the Old Testament. In Zechariah 9 and Isaiah 62 and even uh, inferences made in Genesis 49 you know Matthew was just highlighting to his Jewish audience this is the Messiah this is the one that we've been promised the one who's going to save us and of course in that crowd there were all sorts of reactions and so of course uh, there's kind of like four reactions really there's the the close followers of Jesus the ones that had got to know who he was the one who got to trust him and the ones who obediently went off and got the donkey and the coat. And you get the kind of get the impression they were trying not to be surprised by this man Jesus anymore. <laughs> they, they, they were trying not to, because he just always did the unexpected. There was something else he did. They thought, wow, he's, he can even do this. He can even walk on water. He can even calm storms. He can even heal people. He can cast demons out of people. You know, he seemed to have authority and aura about him that they'd never seen in anyone else. And obviously there was a never, n no one else because he was Jesus, he was God in flesh. And so these close followers of Jesus were just trusting him and excited. But then of course there was the, what I would call the bulk of the crowd. And uh, they were excited, there's no doubt about it. There was a lot of excitement going on in Jerusalem that day. But actually, when you boil it down, you get a sense that they're excited because there was excitement going on. Like what crowds do, you know, when there's a buzz around the place, what's going on? And everyone's sort of trying to work out what's, what's happening. And there's this buzz of excitement because people are excited because they're excited and it sort of multiplies and builds, doesn't it? But they don't actually quite know what they're excited about. <laughs> and um, I think that's kind of a sense of it. And so you, you read on, it says in verse 10, the, the crowds were asking, who is this? <laughs> and of course, then the answer came back in verse 11, um, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. And that's such kind of a sad statement because they were just seeing him as a, an ordinary prophet. Someone from that backwater, um, uh, Nazareth in Galilee. They weren't seeing him as Jesus, their Messiah. Then of course, there was the children in verse 15. Children who shouted out praise, Hosanna to the son of David. And I find that's really fascinating because the children actually got it. They knew, they understood something intuitively, something instinctively within them went, this is who it is. And um, 
I think there's a lesson for us in, in this summer, isn't it? So often we can overthink things and actually out of the ma babes of, uh, a mouth of babes, isn't it, is the phrase we often say. You know, and um, we can learn so much from our children. And they just see something and they call it and they, and they can see someone they can trust and someone they can trust. They pick these things up so quickly and they, they saw Jesus as the one who is a Hosanna, save now. But then lastly, there was the leaders. Um, you know, we read about them in verse 15, the back end of it, and it says, but the leaders were indignant. Hmm. They weren't impressed. They were jealous. They were envious. And later on, if you turn over a few more pass uh, pages in the Bible into chapter um, 26 and verse 3 and 4 of Matthew, it says these they seem, same leaders, the leading priests and the elders were meeting at the residence of Caiaphas, the high priest. And what were they there for? They were plotting how to capture Jesus secretly and kill him. They just wanted to get rid of him. He was a, a nuisance to them. He was undermining them. He was... You know, they, they were just so full of bitter envy and jealousy. They just wanted to get away, get, get rid of him. But you know, it's interesting to notice Jesus didn't get carried away by all this excitement, all this publicity, all the, all the hullabaloo that sort of kind of went with him that day into Jerusalem. You see, he knew what his mission was on this earth. He knew that he wasn't here to be a people pleaser. He hadn't come uh, to just to, to do nice miracles and to make people feel a little bit better. He'd come for a, a more significant purpose than that. He'd come to be a rescuer, to be a saviour. He'd come to do for us what we could never do for ourselves. He'd come to save us from ourselves, to save us from our imperfect ways of living, to, to save us so that that relationship which is broken between God in heaven, our maker, and us on this earth, and to enable that relationship to be restored. And because only perfect people can ever come into relationship with a perfect God, therefore Jesus was sent as God's love gift from heaven to this world, to open up a way for our relationship to be restored. How was that to be done? The only way possible, for dying on a cross. Taking my place, taking the punishment that was rightly mine in his body, because I fall short and because you fall short of God's perfect standards. And so by going to Jerusalem, Jesus actually that day was uh, was prompting this public outpouring of excitement around him, which actually in turn stirred the wicked and jealous leaders into unjustly condemning him to death on a cross. And then in turn, because of that death, he was able to rise from the dead and show that he had, he had conquered death. And that he, our sin and all our wrongdoing and all our bad could be dealt with and He'd taken it in our, his body on the cross and there, would be, there was a, a potential, an opportunity for this glorious exchange to take place where all my rubbish was nailed on Jesus and in return I get all his goodness placed within me as I trust in him and as you trust in him. So what's the takeaway uh, for us today in this coming Easter in 2021? Well, I think the takeaway for me and I think for all of us really is that Jesus' actions remind us of how much he loves us. You know, Jesus' actions remind me of how much he loves me. Let's just read it again. You know, he says there in verse 17 of, of Matthew 20 that he took the 12 disciples aside privately and he told them what was going to happen to him. That's to him. Listen, he said, we're going up to Jerusalem where the Son of Man, that's Jesus, will be betrayed by the leading priests and teachers of the religious law. They will sentence him to die. Then they will hand him over to the Romans to be mocked, to be flogged with a whip and crucified. But on the third day he will be raised from the dead. You see, Jesus didn't 
back away from the mission in hand. He could have held back. You know, he could have changed his mind. He could have refused to go for the, to the cross. But his love for you and his love for me compelled him to go to the cross. It just propelled him there because he loves us. It reminds me of a story that's told. I don't know whether it's a true one or not, but it illustrates the point. A story which is told of a, um, a, a railway crossing operator. And you know, these big railway crossings, they have these um, uh, big barriers that come up and then go down to block the, the road when a, a, a train comes along. And it was a very busy road and the road was full of traffic. And um, he had his young child with him one day and um, all of a sudden he got a message come through saying that a train was imminent and he had to put the crossing down. And as he started to do that, to his horror, he looked and he saw his little child had got up playing near the actual workings, the, the mechanisms uh, of the barrier. And he had this horrible dilemma to make uh, and decision to take. If he carried on lowering the, the crossing, it would almost certainly crush his son to death. But if he didn't lower the crossing straight away, that train would crash and pile into a whole bunch of cars and lorries and maybe dozens of people would get killed that day. He didn't have time to rescue his son and then put it down. He had to do it, make a dis instant decision. And in that heart breaking moment, that young father pushed the button and the barrier came crushing down, killing his son, but saving the lives of many on the roads that day. And that's what God did for us through Jesus. By sending his son, he took the agonizing decision that his son would die on the cross because he is the only one that could pay the price. He is the only one that could be that perfect sinless sacrifice that would satisfy God's justice so that I could go free, so that you could go free, so that we could be released from the penalty of sin and the punishment of sin and the power of sin and even one day the presence of sin. So we could be released from this and reunited with our Heavenly Father. That's how much He loves us. You know, as I've been reflecting on this, I found it really quite emotional to think that's how much God loves me. That's what He thinks of me. And it's how much He thinks of you too. And so if you hear a voice in your head saying, you're worthless. Nobody cares about you. You're a waste of space. You'll never amount to much. You're not important. If you feel rejected by people around, me, around you, let me say this to you. Look at the cross. Look at the cross. You see, as you look at the cross, you'll see Jesus. And as you see Jesus, you'll see his nail-pierced hands, his nail-pierced feet, his side that a spear went through. Why? Because he loves you. As you look at the cross, you'll see his face. And the Bible tells us that that face, because of the beatings that he took, because of the um, horrendous experience he went through before he got to the cross, that it was so disfigured, it was unrecognizable. Jesus went through that because he loves you. And when you look at the cross, you see Jesus who took on himself rejection. The rejection of people, rejection of the leaders around him, and even the rejection of God his Father, because God his Father could not look upon him in that moment on the cross because Jesus took my sin upon him, my wrongdoing upon him, and yours. And God cannot look at sin. 
And so Jesus was even in that moment, he cried out and he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? You see, Jesus went through physical torment and, and emotional torture because he loves you and because he loves me. And that is a decision that Jesus took on Palm Sunday. He could have just soaked up the adoration of the crowds and he could have said, ha, look at me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. But no, he didn't. He went on to the cross on Good Friday. And then he rose from the dead on Easter Sunday. And he did it because he loves us. So how are we going to respond? Well, I hope you're going to respond with just overflowing thankfulness. I hope you're going to res over, uh, respond with worship. I hope you're going to respond just wanting to express your love to God. And that you want to thank him for the cross. Maybe for some of you, you want to just trust him for the first time. Say, Lord, thank you. I trust in you. Thank you for what you did at the cross for me. Thank you that you died in my place. Maybe for some of you, you want to renew that commitment and that trust that you've placed in him and just say lord yeah, I've, I've drifted but lord i'm coming back and i'm i'm just recommitting my life to you today do all those things and let me encourage you as we build up to easter you know this week we're going to be posting on facebook every single day posts that will reflect on what jesus went through that week before easter as we lead into Easter Sunday and just allow your mind to, to sit there and to reflect on what Jesus did so that you might have a relationship restored, that you might know that he loves you unconditionally, fully, completely, unlike anyone else. Warts and all, he loves you so much so that he died for you. Surely that's someone you can't help but in return want to love you know if i put my prayer is that you will gain a fresh understanding of the significance of the cross this week and so let's just pray as we close father we thank you for the cross we thank you for what jesus did there we thank you for his willingness to go despite the enormity of the task despite the incredible sacrifice the unbelievable pain physical and emotional lord thank you that he went there for me he went there for each one of us and at the cross it demonstrates how much you love us lord how we thank you and lord today we just want to say we love you because you first loved us amen you know if you've been touched and moved by this service today let me encourage you to do one or two things you know for some of you it may have stirred things within you and you just need to um you you need to have some tangible sense of god's love around you and um let me encourage you just to write to prayer at fcchurch.co.uk and just say can you pray for me and tell them just a little bit and it'll be confidential and our prayer team will pray for you and so we'd like to pray for you. Maybe you might even want to meet up with someone to pray for you in person. Then we can arrange for that to happen. And um, maybe you've got questions. And if you've got questions and you want to ask those questions, or you just want to tell me that you've trusted Christ for the first time, well, drop me a message to tim at fcchurch.co.uk. And I'd love to hear from you and to support you and encourage you and pray for you too. God bless. Oh, my love.
Well, thanks, uh, Rosie and the worship team uh, for leading us in worship. And um, thanks also to, to Nikki and the prayer team and, and, and Tim for that message today. Um, so we're, we're nearly at the end of our service now. So I'm just going to um, uh, close in prayer. So, so do, do join with me uh, as I pray. Uh, Father, we uh, just thank you for this time uh, together. Um, we thank you for for your word. It just reminds us just how much you love us. Um, and as we go into this time of Easter, just we just are in awe and give thanks for that sacrifice that, and the price that you paid for us. Uh, so, Lord, uh, as we go into this week, uh, I, I pray that we just remember that um, and that we are able just to, you know, to thank you and praise you. And, um, uh, and Lord, just, um, you know, just, uh, just pray for anyone watching who, who, who just uh, needs to hear that now, that you are, are with them and um, that you... You do just come alongside us and you love us, Lord. So we thank you and we praise you. Amen. Thank you, Matt. And thank you to everyone who's been involved in the service and especially welcome again to our new members. And I encourage you as a church family to continue to pray for them, to continue to come alongside them and encourage them as they join our community and get to know us more. So that's it for our service this Palm Sunday. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. And it's not over yet. <laughs> we do have after church coffee and chat at 11.45 in our Zoom room. And if you need the link, it has been sent by email. It's also in the members group. Um, but just email us if you can't find it. And, or if, you, if you're new and you'd like to join, we'd love to have you and just catch up with you, bring coffee and cake, that's on you. And the fellowship and fun is on us. So we look forward to seeing you. Have a great week in this run up to Easter and we'll see you live from the church building next week for Easter Sunday. Thank you, Matt. And take care everyone. Bye for now. Bye.